Hi guys, this is Anna and welcome to my channel. In this video I'd like to talk to you about the books I've read back in November of 2017. There are three books which I mentioned really briefly because I have made a separate review video on Umberto Eco's book Name of the Rose and the two books I've read together with it to help me to understand the book. So I will li leave the link in the info box down below. Everything else in this video I have not previously mentioned. I think I'll start with the books I have on paper and then slowly go to the ones I've read electronically. So I'll start with the non-fiction, with a biography. This is Jeremy Paxman's Life in Questions. I have purchased this book in a Hay Festival back at the end of May 2017. I do like Jeremy Paxman. And I was quite fortunate because I went to the book festival actually managed to get this one as a signed edition. I read it rather quickly and... I liked the witty language, I liked to know a li little bit more about his life, but it's not an amazing in terms of telling me something I really didn't know or telling me something in a profoundly new way. If you like Jeremy Paxman, if you know who he is, he's a broadcaster, a journalist who has been working for BBC for years and years and years, and now he presents the University Challenge, which is why I like him so much, because I like the University Challenge. He talks about his childhood, those chapters I really enjoyed. He talks about his career in journalism, how he joined the BBC, how he spent a while uh, living abroad, particularly in Ireland. So that was quite a nice read. If you're not interested in him as a personality, if you don't know who he is, this book is not for you. So it's a very narrow in terms of readership. So you need to know who he is and probably be fun to pick it up. I gave it 4 to 5, but I'm not keeping this book. It was a really nice read once, but I doubt I will ever pick this up again. And then finally finish, finished Amy. Amy Espices, The Sufficient Grace. This is an Australian author. She's American, but she's living in Australia. She's written this while well, studying in Australia. And I can't find any other books by the author. This book I was a very slow read. I've been reading it since May and I finished it back in November so it's a pretty long period of time, pretty much six months. And I did not like it for a very very long time. So first 150 pages I found that I was struggling with the language, with the setting, it deals with a very closed community. They have very specific religious beliefs. They live in Montana and they're all Montana and they live sort of a semi-agrarian lifestyle. They go hunting a lot, they go fishing. They have gardens, they sort of grow their own food and we deal with a very, very close family of friends. So we see the brother and the sister and their closest friends and then the book took a turn, which really surprised me. I'm not going to tell you which way it went because that was such a surprise I don't want to spoil it for you. And then suddenly the world fell into place, like the pieces of puzzles just got together and I really enjoyed it from the rest, for the rest of it. It's not an easy read, it's a dark read, and I would not recommend it to children, pretty much anyone under the age of 18, because it does have some gruesome scenes, has some scenes of violence, very visually graphic scenes, but I'm glad I have read it. I have a bit of a mixed feelings about it. So, I don't even know how to grade it, I'm not sure I actually gave it some sort of grading on the good reads. It, it is an interesting read. And if you're not overly emotional, if you're not easily upset by the graphic imagery, you can read about violence, then maybe it's worth picking up. I got this in the moth box back in May. And I'm glad I did, because otherwise I would never have picked this up. Another book I have read, this is another Kazuo Ishiguro. He won the Nobel Prize last year, which I'm really pleased about. This is his Never Let Me Go. And I really liked it. I found it scary. It's a very weird theme of the book. I don't know which genre it belongs to. Is it a horror story? Is it a science fiction? It's set in sort of alternative England, alternative United Kingdom, where people are able to clone themselves. And the clones are then harvested for organs. So over the several donations, basically the donor dies because there are only so many for the surgeries your body can sustain. 
and if someone needs your heart, someone needs your heart. So we see the life of those children, of those donors, and then we grow up with them, and we see them become adults, and then how they eventually finish their life, because they've done all the donations. The language is very, very poetic in a way, it's very lyrical. There are parts of these books which were very sentimental, there are parts of this book which I found scary, there are parts which were funny, so I don't know, again, this is a book which is kind of divisive and I can't really summarize my feelings on it. I did like it, I will recommend it, but it did not blow me away. I actually found some of it really unsettling. It's a really nice way of looking at society and what could have been and letting us see where some of the experimentation can lead. Because back when it was written in the 2000s, people did talk more about cloning, it was much more new, it was in the news and there was more, the ethical debate was a lot more in the news. So it's, it's a nice debate about where the extreme of it would take you if the law was different, if we were allowed to do human cloning. Because ultimately humans are quite cruel and how would you feel about your clone? Would you think your clone is a separate human being or is just your property? Basically a piece of meat you can just harvest as many times as you like. So it's a really good debate about society and the social norms. Really beautifully written. But I didn't really connect so much with the main characters. Not as much as I did with other Kazuo Ishiguro's work. But I will continue with the author. I do like his writing style. I do like what he does. Now we're left with the books I have read electronically. I'll start with the one which was quite frequently mentioned on the booktube last year. And this is uh, Stay With Me. By, it's a debut novel by a Nigerian author. It was shortlisted for the Bailey's Prize. I think it was long listed or it was mentioned for the Bell Booker. I can't remember now. I have read it in one day. I found it an extremely engaging read. I found it an interesting read because it tells you about a feminine side, fe fe sort of a female story in a modern Nigeria. And I liked. I liked the main heroine of the book. I liked her journey. I could understand and relate what she was talking about. I'm not going to tell you about the plot because I don't want to spoil it. But it's really refreshing to see a genetic condition mentioned in the book and the impact it can have on a family and the ignorance and lack of medic medicalization which it can have and the ignorance in terms of whether or not you carry or not. I think it was really nicely done. I really enjoyed it. I think it's really nicely written, particularly as a debut novel. It's really fast-paced. And personally, if I compare that book to The Power, which ultimately won the Bailey's Prize, it makes me wonder why The Power won it and not Stay With Me. Because Stay With Me, to me, was a much stronger novel, which actually portrays female in a much more positive light because the main heroine is a very strong woman. I really like the book and I will recommend it. I think it's an engaging read. I take it in the library and honestly one night or maybe two nights it's, it's all it's gonna take you. And then I'm gonna mention the book which is in the list of my biggest disappointments. It's The Power, the book which actually won the Bailey's Prize. I absolutely detested that book. I don't want to spend more time to talk about it. I don't have it anymore. I give it away. Oh. Then I've read Solzhenitsyn, One Day in the Life of Vandinisevich. I like Alexander Solzhenitsyn, so I'm slowly trying to make my way through his books. And that was his sort of novella in... I have it in like an 800 page edition. So I'm not going to lift it. But again, I've read it in one day and as with Archipelag Gulag, I found it moving and powerful. I did cry at one moment when reading it. I love the language. You know, like I said, the and so obviously I like the book. And then the last but not least, the book I have not mentioned at all. I finally read it. 
I have seen it a lot on other booktube channels and I thought like okay pick it up I've read the Silk Roads a new history of the world I've read it electronically it took me about a week in the evenings and I wouldn't say I'm in love with this book I don't understand why it's called a new history of the world because there's nothing new in the way he describes the history it's basically a kind of slow go through with you through the Silk Road. It looks at the history of the nations involved in the Silk Road. So he's starting back in history. So it talks about the history of Islam. It talks about the relationship, different parts around that. So China. I wanted to know more about China. I think it was really briefly mentioned. Could have been more. A big chunk of this book is devoted to the 20th century history, which is not new to me and it's given to you from a British point of view. So the period between World War One and World War Two is greatly discussed and the involvement of Britain in the division of the Middle East and why we went there and that the, how the oil became the dominant force rather than the silk. So we're talking about the trade route which links all of those cities and all of these countries and basically it's we're looking at the battle for the power the battle for economical dominance and it tells you how we have colonized the other countries and what impact it had on the silk roads in the way we look at them now in the middle east now and why we have the borders the way we have them because it deals with such a huge historical period so we're looking at sort of 8th century onwards it's only so many pages long so you can't really go in depth and obviously the author is British he had studied history I believe in, in Oxford so he has his own favorite parts of history maybe the areas he's more comfortable with and he obviously has the British view of it but what was the problem for me is a there was nothing new for me in the book and I can't say like oh it's the book's fault it's just I do have a general interest in history so okay fair enough it's a probably good thing I already knew those things and secondly I found that he was given a very short snippets and then he would like spend a while talking about a particular episode because he probably felt more comfortable talking about 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 that particular episode but it wasn't even so you sometimes wonder like why is he devoting so much time to this particular area of time but not the other one is it more important for the history of the silk way route is it more important for the and um, our understanding of the conflict in the middle east now <sighs> or it could be just because the author is more comfortable or because he thinks the reader will be more comfortable so obviously there's a big chunk of the book devoted to the 20th century politics like the american involvement and how they went into Afghanistan, how the Russia was fighting in Afghanistan. For some people that might be quite a new piece of history and if it is I'm really pleased but for me unfortunately there wasn't much new so I flew through the book, I've read it really really quickly. I found it an engaging read, really easily written so the language is really accessible but I, I wanted more sort of I wanted the author to be a bit more detailed in certain areas and I didn't find it so I think for me that was three out of five stars so that's it guys those are all the books I've read in November 2017 if you have read any of them I would like to discuss it or any of them are interesting to you and you would like to pick them up in the future do let me know see you guys in the next video happy reading bye